feminism. Yay, women love working just like men. Thanks, feminists. Um, but my, my plan and my goal and my hope is to homeschool my children because I, I just can't put them in this situation that I see happening. I feel no question because if I ever have kids, I'd probably do the same thing because this is the education system now is horrible. But the only thing that I, I don't know what you think of this is like, what about their social life? What about like, how do they like make, make, how do they like learn to like develop how to communicate with people and like networking and like things like that? Like, how are they going to learn how to like get friends basically? Like, how does that happen? Yes. Well, the, the early socialization happens when you have siblings. So I, I, I stand True. up to the government also by just believing that we should all be having tons of kids and they keep telling us just have one. Don't be selfish. Uh, no, have <laughs> siblings. If you grow up with siblings, you know how it works. You get, you know, you know, you're fighting, you're socialized pretty quickly and you have to survive and you're not a brat. But the second element of that is to put them into a ton of activities, you know, so oh, there true, yeah. are, I, I still want my kids to be playing sports. I still want them to be dancing. I don't want my little girl. I have this dream that she's, she's going to dance ballet. Mo Lara. Yeah. Against well, it might be me. What's me, about me? My child vicariously. And that's how you socialize. But also uh, micro communities. This is what it's really about. Like, know your neighbors. That's normal. Like, we've gotten so far away from that thanks to this city agenda. Like, it's New York and L.A. And what was so refreshing about moving to the South is people care and know their neighbors. Like, as soon as you move in, like, that idea of someone bringing over a cup of sugar, that's real. People send us cookies, people send us flowers, you know, welcome to the neighborhood. They want to know about you. And we've removed so far, we've just been removed so far away from that. So reinstilling, you know, family, faith, and, and neighborhood, I think, is a big part of that. And, of course, I'm, I'm a Christian, yeah. so moving getting involved the in the South? church, you naturally have a community. What? Yeah, it's it's so funny yeah, because, because everything's now bigger nowadays, than they, they used to teach like God and like the Bible and like all this stuff, right? And, and it's like now they're teaching like completely different agendas and stuff. And it's just Bro, it's it's, yeah, it's insane big, like where it was cousin? years and years ago to where it is now. What about uh, my big cousin? We're going downhill, and um, it's really really sad. That, uh, what about the, the B the B the B the B P? But it's a humanist agenda. Yeah. I mean, I was just what they did was they removed God because the government actually them. wants to be God in your life. Mm -hmm. And you saw the greatest example of that during COVID. Like, people were turning uh, on their TV screens and, like, worshipping whatever Dr. <laughs> Fauci said. It was scary. I mean, they had signs in their yard, like, thank you, Dr. Fauci. Like, he was God. And if, if, if Dr. Fauci came down and said, like, don't see your grandma, let her die alone, people did it. They did it. That's crazy. That's crazy. crazy. Commandment that they must follow. And you have to reflect on that and realize no how much of a humanist agenda yeah, that no. really was. Like, place your faith in yeah, God. I know it's a close game. In experts. It is oh, such okay. a good it version going. of the word of God. And, and it was done intentionally you know? and very slowly, I believe, by the communists that came into this world. I couldn't, I couldn't smack him, you know. I had to keep it close and then push make, for that. Makes sense. So, can you good word, word, you know? Where is the best place to live? Like, where is the best place to grow up life be hard sometimes but you gotta win you know the best highest quality of life you can get right now in the world would you say keep it close with it the whole team and then lost I mean, i'm in tennessee i absolutely love this state it's the best place i've ever lived we were between here and texas i do love my texans there were all there will always be like a brotherhood between the texans and the tennesseans i mean they call us the volunteer state because we volunteered to help texas gotcha um but everything that you're told by the media about the south being backwards and racist and you know slow is a complete lie because they don't want you realizing that the people down here are getting something right they value Wait. their family they value they so the thought is it racist friendships they value their neighbors and they do not want the government in their business i so must go see for myself i don't want to be forward gotcha candace what is your background where where, where, where oh. did you grow up what's your ethnicity I, i'm just curious because um like you said like a lot of people like are under the impression yeah like it, the south is all full racist people and all this stuff so tell me about your background so I grew up in Connecticut, and it's funny because uh, during my formative years, I moved in with my grandparents. Her eyes seem my like they're really far apart. He's from, from the South. He's from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Oh, and wow. he grew up in the segregated South, you know, grew up on a sharecropping farm. And he's the one that instilled early on in me the conservative values that I have today. I always thought I took a very liberal route to conservatism. Liberal. So don't worry, I was a feminist. I was like, yay, oh. New York City, let's go party. And, you know, during those 18, 19, 20, 21. Uh, but I came back to my faith. I came back to conservatism because I realized that the happiest and the best people that I ever knew were my grandparents. You know, married mm. when they were 17 years old, stayed married until my grandmother's dying day. And what they put first always were their values, their, their faith and their family. 
And so when you start to see that, where as, in the beginning, I was like running away from my grandparents. I was so embarrassed that they were like the Bible Belt Christians that people tell you about. And then you realize, man, they were so happy and it was so simple. And it's because they believed in order, you know, just order. They believed in respect. My grandmother respected my grandfather. Like they believed even in traditional masculinity and traditional femininity. Like there is a natural order to things and it works. Men should be men. Women should be women. We shouldn't be trying to breed the natural aggression out of men by telling them it's toxic. Like we can't survive without strong men. That aggression is what protects homes and protects families. We shouldn't be trying to breed femininity with out of women, like encouraging them to be clinically obese and not care about their looks yeah. because at the patriarchy, like that's a beautiful design. Like we're meant to be the weakness in men, right? Like it's such a beautiful yin and a beautiful yang. And once you realize that our world is disordered in the West because they keep fighting natural order, then you become like me and you just become like obsessed with saying like, no, like we're going back to the basics. And that's what I believe I am. I just defend natural order as it is. Got it. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. You know, I, I have a question for you that I've always wondered because, you know, 10 years ago when I was, you know, uh, I was like a, in my teens. Well, yeah, like a teenager. So I would like when I would, when I would go to like New York, and when I would go to like Los Angeles, they were completely different than what they are now. Even San Francisco, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. California is one of the most beautiful states ever. Beautiful weather, everything. Now you go to these places, it's ruined. You know, Newsom obviously ruined California. Everyone knows that. But even New York, New York City is it's horrible now. Have you have you been to New York recently or LA recently? It's it, it, New it's York sad. really has a stench now. Not a stench. It's oh, so no. it's it's sad. And filthy. Yeah, it, it, mm -hmm. it, it's so sad. My question to you, Candace, is how is there any hope for these cities, these big cities? Like, can they come back or are they pretty much they're 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 done? It's difficult for me with the policies that Gavin Newsom passed to see how California can come back. Uh, New York, I, I will hold a candle out for. Look, I was born in New York, so I might be speaking completely biased here. But you're right. I mean, these cities sell you freedom so that they can enslave you. Yeah. And that's what's no happened mass. across the board. These inner cities have been completely enslaved by the concept of freedom, like believing in this dream that everything can be free and you have to be accepting of everything. And then you look around you and you realize that, like, you've been completely dominated by this concept of freedom that was never actually real. And you've become really a slave to your own vices. And so that's why people are fleeing the cities. I, I wish them luck. I would move out of California if I lived there hmm. on the basis of the policies which even control your children and control your children's bodies. For me, I, I, I could never be there. I think it's horrific. It's horrible. When I went, when I, when I, my edu I, uh, I went to high school in California and they were, I, talk, I talked wow. about this uh, with Trump? President Trump. And they tell you, boom, boom, you know, bow. we hate Trump and all these things. Sw he's bad, Swizzy. he's a crook, all this stuff. And they, you're never ever supposed to endorse Swizzy. politics on children. That's parents' job to teach them and inform them on certain topics like that. Why are teachers to, uh, uh, discuss that? It's crazy. Um, um, what are your thoughts yeah. on like that? I, we already talked about the education system, but like, what are your what are your thoughts on like, um, how, like these, these public education systems? Yo, how corrupt they are. Yo, and when these the teachers, they, they're now about to, you know, voice their own uh, political system. Yeah, well, they're not teachers, they're activists. And, and that is the reason why they want to establish the public school system and federalize public education uh, for a reason, because it allows them to choose their activists and they're training up these activists and university campuses, which have become totalitarian states. And so, yes, are there good teachers? Of course. But the reality is, especially when you get into the inner city community, you have a bunch of people that are activists who believe that they are, that the students are their children, that they're not the children of the parents. And they're constantly trying to teach them uh, to brainwash the children to believing that their parents are backwards. Thomas Sowell has a really great book on that, like how they made that incursion following the Department of Education being established in the 1970s. And the book is called Inside the Education System. It's a wonderful read. I mean, they intentionally sexualized kids. Before the Department of Education was established, the majority of high schoolers were graduating with their virginity. You know, Planned yeah. Parenthood got into the classroom. They have, a, you know, a, a seated audience and they routinely bang, feed them poison. Bang. And the sooner that parents the recognize name, that name, and too. realize that this is just Soviet propaganda. This is like, these are Soviet classrooms. We always study propaganda and we're like, oh yeah, like Stalin did that. That could never happen here. No, you two are victims of propaganda. I was a victim of propaganda. Victim. And the sooner that you realize it, you the sooner you can avoid victim. it. You are a victim. 100%. I want to ask you a question that my entire chat is going to ask. It's about Kanye. They said, because I've been trying to get Kanye on, on, on like my stream. We've 
I've been close like two or three times. Um, they, they, they said, ask about Kanye uh, not getting on screen. Kanye she, was, she went through something similar no, or something Kanye like that. You, I think you did do something with him. I saw a clip, I think, right? <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah, I actually am planning on doing something with him pretty soon again too. And you know, I have always been a person that like is the friends with Kanye like the, like and the child a lot in the public. And I think it's really crappy when people that say they're friends. She sounds like she wants to go to the world. Like politicians and no, she just wants everybody. She just yeah. wants this yeah. sick Kanye's shit to stop. Just, just dropped his vultures too all so this, he was just in Korea oh, the last that I checked but I didn't do anything extreme with him a two year old can um, fucking like decide like if she he, he, she wants to be a fucking he or she no more you know what I'm saying I just do like podcasts nigga you're fucking too I the podcast that I had bolted with him and, go and fucking people really loved it because you got to hear Kanye not on the defense throw sand so around the fuck are you talking about it's nice to see him not having to be on the defense and just being able to hear what he actually thinks yeah no no seriously I I think Kanye I'm a big fan of his music and um, a lot of stuff that he said in, in, in interviews and stuff. It's super interesting. He's a very, very, very interesting person. Um, mm -hmm. Super interesting. I want to ask you uh, a, a question that's uh, related to you. Would you ever run for presidency or do you have any type of motivation to, to, to run in what? office of any type of uh, branch or anything like that? He so said, I can honestly say I have no motivation I, at the moment. Said, I never saying? say never because I, I feel like we you. say something like that. We make plans and God laughs. You're and next black, you know, you're black. What I can say that if I ever ran for president, it would be with Thomas Massey. Like I would either be his VP or ask him my VP. I think Thomas Massey is the greatest person in Congress. He's the best that we have going for us. And if we had a bunch no, of Thomas Massey, the, the, the country would be Anything in a else different is state. But he's already there, so I'm just like, Thomas Massey, please run made for president. Made propaganda I for your pride, I know. over broken glass to vote for you and to do everything so in my power to get America chat? to vote oh, for you. That's just chat being but chat. But for me, yeah, I, I love you, being I'm, mom. I love being able to have a podcast. Chat too. I love being able to speak if you about read the chat, issues you might lose I really yourself. care about. Like I'm so <laughs> anti-vax and being able to share why you that is You think my chat is crazy? The Aiden Ross chat is fucking crazy. Don't be with that mom? as a person. I don't think you get to do that Jewish? as a president because Jewish, all you're I constantly bet. having to do is fight battles of people lying about you every day. It's true. It's a bunch Which of Which I guess I still do now as well, but whatever. <laughs> yeah, you probably you probably have a lot of ops, enemies, all no, the libtards on X. Like what? Trying to come at you because they come at me too. There's no way to monetize. There's no way to like- They have this, they're so deep too. Why are they so deep, but you never see them in person. Everybody, it, they're this, so deep. This, you, bro. There's just right? no way. I was, I've never seen somebody away, that quote tweets my tweet with like 100,000 likes, millions of views, and they're just like, wow, this this transphobic streamer. And like, it's insane, but I don't see them in person. I want to have a conversation with you. I know, they're, way, they're, bro. I don't know. Fuck don't you too, it. nigga. Um, yeah, I, it's, 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 it's probably Twitter thoughts. You know that's why. Cool. Twitter thoughts. They would never say anything in person because that's, that's where they get their power. They're like, they do this and they hit send and they're so tough. And I'm like, you would never say that to me in my face. You, you know, bro. I would never accept you saying that to the my face. Said, so you, they, ha they have to stay you have to be there, bro. behind you have to be the phones. There. Yeah, yeah. You no. have to be there. Um, I, you know, you, you had mentioned there was a, a school shooting today. Um, and, oh, and you know, there's there's quite some that happened. There was a huge you know, school shooting today, bro. What the ratio that shit was is. actually I crazy. Wanna, I'm, like, I'm misinformed on the on the ratio, but it happens. I see it a lot, right? I want to ask you, what, what what can we do about school shootings? Yeah. Because no, you know, it's it's, it's um, a really really big issue. You know, kids are kids, and no kid deserves Maybe. to lose their life no, over I don't that know. ever. I don't know. Um, so how do how do we uh, how do <laughs> what, what do you think we can do about school shootings? Not close at all. Well, the um, number one cause of, of school shootings four, is pharmaceuticals, the one discussion that the media will never have with you because they're all bought and paid for by big pharma. And so they point no, the finger and they buy a ton of things. They will, rate, they will blame what everything will from video gaming to rap music to Donald Trump Ill every single oh. time to Republicans uh, to the NRA. Exactly. And they never I'm tell us what flesh. drugs doing, the man? kids are on. And they're all on drugs. You can see it in their eyes. You can you know what pharmaceuticals do to someone. You know what a pharmaceutical cocktail does to somebody. And be very clear here that the cia wanted to see they did Be literal clear. experiments to figure out how they could brainwash people to commit mass crimes no and mass. i talk about the books that i encourage people to no read online mass. to learn about mk how you been, learn about, about all the mind control programs cointel pro and the things that our cia has been up to they know that there is a cocktail of medicine that can make people crazy and schizophrenic um there's a wonderful book called chaos that i've encouraged people to read that's written by tom o'neill which will really make you understand no, 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 what your government no, 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 is you better believe the deep state is in fact evil and none of that is a conspiracy it's recorded fact 
fact um, that, that this researcher got after 25 years of filing FOIA doesn't requests. Know what she's talking about. And so when you realize that you they don't know, know what you're talking about. that they are making these kids Just insane, they Georgia? know that these drugs and these SSRIs Georgia. that they're putting kids on are not good for their brain. And then as I'm soon as the shooting happens, you never hear anybody talk about Big Pharma. We're never going to get to the root of school shootings. You know, kids are not supposed to be drugged. Your brain is not supposed to be drugged. You know, clearly what's going on with Britney Spears, everyone's trying to jump conspiracy theories. That's your brain when you are being, you know, big pharma has put a cocktail of drugs to experiment with your brain over a long period of time. That, that, that is the result. And so we don't have honest conversations. How does that about not make sense? Drugs are bad nobody, for you. I guess, <laughs> just up to big How does that not make sense, Jalen? The, the biggest lobbying group in D.C. <laughs> Pharmacies are, are all trap, right? They uh, pharmacies are so fucked up. People, people really. Uh, it's crazy. It's it's so easy. It's so easy to just get put someone, uh, prescribe someone on a bunch of medication that's poison. That's on you. It's like they don't even care. They write a prescription so easily for anything. But you go to uh, a doctor. I have anxiety, or I have back pain, or something too like that. Too much about routines about to like, but I'm an opioid or something. It's it's so nuts without so even like crazy. trying something else to try to resolve it. It's just so easy to prescribe an opioid. And, you know, I suffered like a very, very bad opioid addiction that I'm open about. And it's like, I understand it. Like, I understand how like, it's a about? trap and it's like, it's all, it's just, it's, it's a whole mess. All that. Trap, all that whole in the pharma, pharma, pharma well, good for you for getting, uh, you know, for combating opioid addiction because it's incredibly hard. That is not an easy thing. Like, you, oh, you I are, know gym, bro. you are I blessed, this, I you know, that you are I a minority you guys. people that are able to beat their opioid addictions and to Thank think you. that the people who didn't beat it, the people that have died, people that have turned to the streets because they can't get another prescription after Big Pharma literally made them addicts. Yeah. And, you know, let a drug dealer big get caught bang, selling something, bang. they go to prison. Boom. Yeah. What happens to Big bah, Pharma? Bah, oh, they bah. get a fine. Nothing. Oh, I'm Nothing. sorry that we, we turned the whole nation into a bunch of opioid addicts. We're, we're willing to cut the check for a billion dollars. They already knew it was addicting. Yep. They already set aside money that they knew they were going to have to eventually gotcha, play, pay. <laughs> it's a complete racket. And in the, at the end of the day, it's gotcha, the American bitch. people that are suffering because of all of these drugs. And so I really encourage people, you know, don't take these drugs until you really understand. Like your doctor is being paid to offer you certain drugs. I mean, even birth control. I'm like also rapidly against birth control after learning all of the research. Why do you think so many women are struggling with infertility? Why do they think these oh. drugs were created in the first place to make women infertile? So it's it's just such a racket when you learn the history of these drugs and how these drugs were able to get passed by the FDA and what they always knew about these drugs. And then to see people That's suffering down the, the line, it, it, it truly is an evil. It's horrible. Maya, uh, I have a, this is when I was like 12 years old. I have a story for you. When I was like 12, I was sleeping uh, one time. You slept when you were 12 uncle, once? He was on a bunch of uh, drugs, uh, meth. And uh, he walks in and stabs me with a knife in my sleep. It's crazy. It, yeah, 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 yeah. Stabbed me. Yeah, I pulled the knife out, screamed, went to the hospital. But I'm just saying, like, it's insane because he was prescribed well, was like, a bunch insane. of drugs. And he got off the prescription <laughs> and then he's on meth. <laughs> and it's crazy. You know, I still see my uncle now. I didn't, I didn't hear. I didn't you hear it, Jalen. He he. Thanksgivings and stuff. Like that. The drug dealers they aren't on the streets, by the way. They're in back offices at yeah. the FDA. They're in your government. Those are those are the big guys. If you think it's El Chapo, you're out of your mind. It's these families, the Merck family, the, the families that have been made billions and trillions of dollars by turning Americans into addicts. It's it's totally sick and disturbing. It's horrible. Wait, uh, Candace, how many uh, minutes do I have with you? Sorry, I, I just I was you're curious. Good. Don't worry about it. You're good. Get your, could, you can get all your questions asked. Well, I wanted to ask some fun stuff too, because I mean, like, again, like what, what I wanted to do with President Trump is like he's not all political. Political, like, it's a human being at the end of the day. Like, I want to ask, like, first off, like, what are some hobbies you like to do? Like, you're a person, you, you know what I mean? Like, you're like everyone else. You have interests and stuff. What are some of your interests and hobbies that uh, you you uh, you do? Okay, so the newest hobby that I picked up in the last couple of years, which people have seen on my Instagram, is gardening, because I realized one day that mm -hmm. we're all on welfare if you don't know how to grow your own food. And so yeah. I got super into that. Love going to the farmer's market. I think that's the way everyone should shop. It is it totally changes the game. I know I sound super Southern right now, but even grocery stores is like a step moved in the humanist agenda, in my view now. Um, and just being able to support like local farmers. Uh, beyond that, obviously, my hobbies are my kids as well. Like, I mean, the, the greatest gift that I have is, is being a mom. I, I mean, I just have the most beautiful children, the, the best husband. Uh, and me and my husband love to fish. I am a oh, wow. fisher woman. I can be on a boat all day. Uh, particularly, I, I like lakes. Gotcha. I mean, sorry, river, river fishing. Sorry. 
river fishing oh, that's fun that's cool yeah I uh yeah, I never tripping down the river and fishing all day like you you really can't beat it. No, I never I never uh, I never got into uh, fishing, but uh, I I oh, always want the best. You have to you have to like go out like go see real America like go to Wyoming, you know go go do Idaho go fish and you'll be like wow this is God's country you know what I mean? Yeah no for sure. What about um what is your what is your favorite food to eat like what do you uh, what do you like to eat? Oh gosh, I'm going to be such a stereotype here, but I I would probably say I eat a lot of different foods, but everybody knows that chicken is my favorite. It just is. <laughs> I just think it's a perfect meat. You know, like chicken pot pot. I mean, any way that you can serve it up, I just think chicken, chicken. is just, it's superior. She likes chicken. Uh, I need to fall into every stereotype. Oh wait, but you know what? I will say close neck and neck pasta. Chicken I and watermelon. Love Italian food. It's really bad. Super I good. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's stereotype too. Oh, like girls whoa. love pasta. Well, well, I am well. a stereotype in that way. I well, I well, well. 